Hello, I'm Simon Christie. And I'm Danny Sparks Cousins. Welcome to a brand new series of your 4x4, but welcome back to our Kimberley adventure. Now, Danny, we're halfway through our Kimberley adventure. Where are we heading off to this series? So, I mean, we've got plenty to cover this series. We're up to Cape Levick, we're checking out Broome, we're doing Tunnel Creek and Wingena Gorge. Bungle Bungle, plenty to do. Sounds sensational, Danny. Now, for this episode, viewers, we've got a special one for you. We're going to take a quick look back at the highlights of last series, the first 10 days of travelling from Kalanara to Derby. We're also going to take a quick look forward for the highlights that are coming in this series. Viewers, I'm Simon Christie. I'm Danny Sparks Cousins. And welcome to your 4x4 as the Kimberley Adventure continues. Your 4x4 is partnered by the Holden Colorado 7, Light Force Performance Lighting, Brown Davis Automotive, Kmar 4-wheel drive accessories, ARB 4x4 accessories, Piranha Off-Road Products, Berrima Diesel, Hema Maps and Cooper Tyres. Right, this is awesome, this is the beginning, this is the iconic trip of a lifetime, the Kimberleys. After 15 years producing the books and maps and take people there, and, you and got there. I got there and seen it. It's a very unique rock in the area. It's the only place in the world where it is. You turn the camera upside down and it was virtually like a mirror. It, it was, was just yeah. spectacular. Yeah. Crystal flat water. Yes. Coming on the sunset. And the bats, I mean that was just amazing. Right guys, an official woohoo! We're here, the beginning of the Gibb River Road. You wouldn't think you'd come across that almost tropical rainforest. No. I know the signs said 28 to 32 degrees. But it was just beautiful, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, it was just unbelievable. You know, Every single day, it's just blue skies. The backdrop is just stuff you see in movies, really. Coming to a place like this at the end of a hot, dusty day on the road is, yeah. is quite special. It's sweet, yeah. There was just mountains all around us with sheer cliffs. It's certainly better than I expected. I think those Coburn Ranges really feature a sort of the entrance to the Kimberley. It's just an amazing place. Someone that hasn't been here, first time seeing it all, it's just, that's one thing you don't think this is sort of on our doorstep here in Australia. We had the rope swing at the miners pool that we were having a bit of fun on and attempting. Great for the kids, they're just having a blast. It's wonderful to see so many families up here travelling with young children. Look at that, nice hot ham and pineapple pizza, straight out of the little oven. Wouldn't be without it out here.
This sort of country is just magnificent. You're not out here to rush it through. Some of those corners, isn't oh. it? Another thing you gotta be careful of too. Yeah, when they say dip, they actually mean like huge hole basically. It's kind of an understatement. You've got all of the wonders of the outback, the great long distance roads, nice warm days. Val had his chainsaw with him, so that made the job quite easy. You feel like you're almost, you're pulling into a public pool every so often. <laughs> <laughs> that majesty of the Kimberleys, isn't it really, Andrew? This is, awesome. this is just awesome. What a sensational experience that was, Cam. As soon as you get in the air, you can see exactly why they're flying us up there. The falls themselves, to me, were the highlight that I was really looking forward to. We all behave like kids, actually, in the rapids. Every corner kind of has its new amazing things that you get to see. Little Merton Falls on the way back were spectacular. To be able to walk through the bush and, and look at the artwork, it's been a fantastic thing. Back into Drysdale Station. I don't know if you had for lunch, but I had the burger there. And Same. It was, it was pretty good. How good was that river experience we had this morning? You walk for an hour, by the end of it you're going, this better be good. And then definitely once we came over that last sort of big Hill. The waterfall was absolutely magnificent. Swimming underneath that waterfall with it flying down on your head, it was unbelievable. No one touched the bottom. I just stay on the low high. <laughs> <laughs> Within an hour, hour and a half of driving, we're in another totally different location. This would be full bore in the wet season, wouldn't it? We're standing right in the middle of a gorge. It's huge. We basically rocked in here, a bit of dust, driving into the sun. That's correct. And that was probably pretty memorable because the point of that is that's really exactly what you're not supposed to do. The place is called Solon Grove and it's a lovely, quite beautiful spot. Birds tweeting again. And we're going snake hunting tonight. Snake hunting tonight? Yes. Fantastic day. <laughs> Wonderful. Man cannot make anything like this. It's no. It's just stunning. It's sort of one of those places you just soak in because you forget about everything else. The most popular and to me, the most spectacular gorge that we've seen so far. And as you come down, you get this vista down here and it just knocks your socks off. And that's really what the Kimberleys is about, guys. It's the dramatic scenery. It's that incredible sort of pristine cleanness of everything. It's just a spectacular place to be. Almost like a Hollywood set sometimes, isn't it? It's kind of... It is, but it's better. It's better. It's just so natural. It's real. From one end to the other, what a ride. It was beautiful, the lookouts and everything we found, the beautiful black rock. 
We've left Kununurra and in that 10 days, eight days, whatever, we're out in the middle of nowhere, until you yeah. pull in the derby, you haven't really hit civilization. No, no. I think the jetty certainly is a high point because that is something that is quite spectacular. It's watching that sunset over the west, it's certainly well worth coming all this way just to see that. It really is your passport to see Australia and to get into locations like this is just a phenomenal thing to come and enjoy. ARB, Australia's largest manufacturer and distributor of 4x4 accessories, has everything you need for your next off-road adventure. From bull bars and suspension to recovery gear and lights, we've got four-wheel drives of all shapes and sizes covered. Whether you're heading off to Bitumen for a weekend getaway or preparing for that epic round Australia trip, enjoy a safer, more comfortable journey with ARB. To order a copy of our free catalogue, visit our website or give us a call. Got a tough 4x4 tourer and enjoy hitting the tracks? Odds are you'll need some serious underguard protection and a heavy duty long range tank. Brown Davis Automotive offer aluminised steel underguard protection plates and long range tanks for most popular makes and models. They're designed and developed right here in Australia and have been tested to the extreme right across this great country. Remember Brown Davis Automotive, it's a trusted and family owned Aussie business and proud manufacturers of high end tanks, underguards and more. Now who doesn't want more power? And I bet that most of you with diesels have your hands in the air. DP Chip is not a snack food, it's the real deal. And simply modifies the engine fuel injection parameters to increase performance to a measurable difference of up to 35% more power and torque and up to 10% better economy. DP Chip, the only diesel power chip with a five year warranty, 24 seven tech support and user adjustability. For more information on DP Chip diesel power, call 02 1022 or visit dpchip.com. Who has a range of SUVs that you can grow with? When we were younger, we thought everyone was on our side. Then we grew a little and romanticized the time I saw flowers in your hair. So it takes a boy to live, it takes a man to pretend he was there. Think SUV. Think Holden. We've got a great entry this week from Alan and Marge, who have written, On the road with our 4x4, cannot ask for anything more. On Cooper tyres we do run, over rugged terrain, oh what fun. Thanks for sending in that email. You've won yourself a HEMA Explorer app and a Piranha recovery bag. All entries go in the running for a Brown Davis long range fuel tank, a pair of Lightforce Venom 50 watt HID driving lamps, and an RFI antenna pack, including an antenna, stubby holder, cap and water bottle. Plus all fans are eligible for the big Cooper Tires giveaway valued at up to $1,800. Check the Your 4x4 website for full details. Hi, I'm Andrew from DP Chip. Well, this trip's been a long time building up, and one of the big building up jobs, of course, with our Nissan Patrol. You've probably seen the old GQ Patrol on many of the trips previously, and we've sort of taken that out, and it's been a great machine, nothing wrong with it. It's still going, and we'll get it back out on more trips. But uh, for this big one, we uh, had our new GU Patrol 3 litre. A lot of people might question, you know, why do we get that vehicle? They're a bit dated, and, and who knows the, the length of time it has left on the market. But actually, it's a very, very popular vehicle. It's the sort of vehicle that actually a lot of our customers come in with because at the end of the day it's still a traditional live axle wagon that can be quite modified with parts readily available for it. So we set out of course with the task to get the vehicle set up knowing that you know we're expecting actually a baby and we'll be bringing along the whole family which pretty much meant we'll be bringing nearly everything including the kitchen sink and all the baby's bottles and steaming equipment and you name it. We didn't have a lot of time to do it. We've been very, very busy at work as usual. You don't always have a lot of time to do your own thing, so there was a lot of after hours work spent on it. 
and one thing of course that we set out to do was to make sure that it would ride correctly because it really was a nice vehicle we had a good time with it at Mount Seaview trip but uh, coming on this long one here we're going to be carrying a lot of load so certainly in that end we knew the suspension wouldn't be up to the job and we got onto our friends at ARB and organised uh, the old man emu suspension and we organised an ARB bar. We've used also their rooftop tent that we've used successfully on the Simpson Desert trip and some others and it's absolutely been great. On this trip we've seen many, many tyre carcasses on the side of the roads, absolutely shattered and I'm sure they were probably a high pressure blowout to actually be quite honest. So one thing when you're on these trips, no matter what you're doing, whatever tyres you're wearing, you've got to be considering your tyre pressures, absolutely, particularly with the load that you're carrying. The rear suspension we had, I think it was plus 500 coil springs in to take load, and you know, it's still only just sitting level by the time we loaded everything in, all the baggage and clothes and food, and we've got drawers in the back and the fridge, the little oven and everything else, before you know it, it got loaded up. Um, we had the awning also on the side. We actually haven't used the awning a lot because the weather's been absolutely pristine out here, but we've still got it there for if we pull up camps early and we had a lot of sun to get a bit of cover. And pretty much any time we drive our vehicles, it really is to test the vehicles out and to test the equipment and accessories that we have. One of the things we've done is actually to leave the exhaust system, uh, even though people all over the social media have been sort of hounding us to get all these other mods done. We left the exhaust standard so we could do some measurement and testing of exhaust gas temperatures. We've fitted our exhaust gas temperature gauge. We've also fitted our fuel filter pre-filtering system. I've been into a bit of in-depth talk about pre-filtering before. So pre-filtering is a good way of monitoring what's going on and just preparing your fuel before it gets to the main fuel filter. So far on this trip we've been getting fuel pretty much, you have no option. When you're out in these places here, you pull up in the middle of nowhere, you take it that they've got good fuel. I always use the argument that bad fuel is going to happen probably in the city more than out here on a trip. But of course if you do have a pre-filter installed or a filter system you've got a glass bowl at least with, you can see what's going on. Always keep your original one though as your main filter. And yeah, sure, be careful when you fill up, but again, you don't have an option. The chance of dirty fuel out in these areas, I actually think is generally fairly remote. Chances are you'll be stuck with everybody else on the side of the road because everybody's filling up there. It's really busy out here, um, compared to actually when we've been through Central Australia. The top end here's got a lot of traffic, a lot of people around, again, all filling up at the same place. I think you'll be pretty protected by the fact that make sure your vehicle's serviced before you come away is gonna be a better prevention than anything else, in particular the fuel filter. One of the other mods we've done, and we've just done it fairly standard, has been with our DP chip system, obviously carrying all that weight, and it is a fairly small engine in a very big traditional four-wheel drive. We've got much bigger tyres than standard now, I think they're equivalent to about 33 inch, but that has taken the wind out of the vehicle sails. We put the DP chip in and it's probably levelled it up to about where it would be in a standard condition. So even though you know, you'd be thinking, geez, I should get massive power gains on top, remember we've been lugging this thing down with weight, tyres and everything else, particularly everything on the roof, has a big effect on wind noise. You can hear it inside the cabin. Wind noise is turbulence. Turbulence means things are getting held back. One of the other things that we've done on this has actually been our high performance intercooler upgrade. So we can obviously work this vehicle under a little bit more arduous conditions, which we have been to stay up with the rest of the crew. And we know then of course we've got a little bit better cooling effect. So overall the vehicle pretty much is in standard configuration probably mechanically, but when it comes to suspension and all the other bits and pieces we've put on, it's certainly been modified to, to quite an extent. Drive with a little bit of mechanical sympathy for the vehicle. Don't push the thing foot flat day in and day out. If you're going to do that, expect something to break. Our vehicle is brand new. It's only got about 11 or 12,000 Ks on it. We left with five. We've done about 7,000 Ks on this trip, but I've driven with mechanical sympathy pretty much the whole way. So it means drive at normal, and if the conditions get hard, maybe take it out of overdrive. Just don't push the vehicle all the time foot floor. So I think, look, in summary with vehicles, be prepared, certainly carry some spares, carry some little bits and pieces that you think might go wrong, some nuts and bolts, whatever it is, but absolutely be prepared and probably front end load your preparation of this trip back home where it's easy to work on so that when you're out here you only have some small things like we've seen, some little things here and there playing up, but they can be dealt with on a trip like this.
Sometimes the front runners lead from behind. And when it comes to protecting your rear, Kmart are world leaders in rear end protection and tow bar combinations. The just released Prado 150 is no exception, with a bar that is designed to follow the car's lines and work with your sensors and factory camera. For the best in rear end protection, trust Kmart. It's a statement, not just an accessory, but the toughest of 4x4 trips. For more info, go to kmart.com.au. Warning, beware of imitation lights. Only Light Force Performance Lighting guarantees Australian made, no leaking or melting, quality output and three year warranty. Unlike their imitators, Light Force lights feature peerless construction, leak proof seals, impact proof lenses and filters, vibration and fracture resistant mounts and housing, and stainless steel fittings, outshining and outlasting their impersonators in every way. Often imitated, never replicated. Visit lightforce.com for the full range of authentic Light Force lights. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R clip. Lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. Well guys, the question for the experts this week comes from Rowan Hicks, who has written, is it okay to run on well-maintained outback roads in too high, or should I stick with four-wheel drive at all times? Well Rowan, that's a great question. Let's check in with Alan Johnson from Piranha. We have a very good question about two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive use on outback roads, and the big question is well-maintained. Just coming back from two weeks in the desert, and I have to say I didn't find too many well-maintained outback roads. But to answer your question specifically, absolutely yes. Two-wheel drive, or in something like this 80 series, normal just four-wheel drive, just constant four-wheel drive system, is perfectly acceptable. The speeds you'll be sitting on will probably be 80 odd k's, not too many corrugations, it's virtually like driving on a highway. In fact, some of those well-maintained roads are like hyperspatial bypasses, they're absolutely fantastic. Now, on the last two weeks, my experience is I didn't find any roads that fit that description. Most of them were corrugated and chopped up and pretty rough. They hadn't been graded in ages. So if you are actually travelling in Outback Australia, the important thing is to remember, as always, we go on about this all the time, is first of all, tyre pressures, let your tyre pressures down a bit. Secondly, it's probably a very good idea in a vehicle like this to lock the centre diff. And in something like a normal four-wheel drive, put your hubs in and run it in high four. You'll get more traction, less bouncing around, it'll be a lot more stable. But as I say, if the roads are good and they're well maintained, it's just like a highway, it's just a dirt highway, UHF communication, and go out and have a fantastic holiday. For sending in that question, you've won yourself a DP chip merchandise pack, including a chippy doll, pen, key ring, cap, and stubby holder, as well as an ARB prize pack featuring socks, a toaster, and a cooler bag. All Ask an Expert entries go into the series draw for an ARB twin motor compressor, a Kmart $1,000 gift voucher, for Osbar or Kmart products, and a 12 volt travel buddy oven for hot food on the go. Plus all of our lucky viewers are eligible to enter the huge draw for $1,800 worth of Cooper tyres. Check the Your 4x4 website for full details. And what an absolutely stunning sight. It's, it's just, just soaking. Unbelievable. This is why we go to work, isn't it? Eh? Absolutely <laughs> right. Awesome. Once you get into this area, you start to notice everything sand now. Yes. I didn't think this trip could get any better. It is just absolutely so raw with nature, it's just magnificent. It's just absolutely classic. This whole place is something out of history, it's spectacular. I've learned how not to pick up a mud crab, I've got a nice little nip on the finger here. We expected to see something magnificent, but it's even more. There's so many things up here 
to see and do. It's just an amazing part of the world. All we need now is a couple of quiet beers and a sunset, we'll be right. Oh, it doesn't get much better than yeah. this. That was phenomenal. Once you're in, the whole thing opens up. It's just a huge cavern, isn't it? And this is exactly why you put up with the hundreds and hundreds of k's of corrugations and dirt and flies and whatever is to reach places like this. The colours, the textures, everything's just jumping out at you. It's just a sight to be seen. The traction control suddenly went off and he said, well, that's weird. And it wasn't until probably 100, 200 metres down the road that we noticed we had a flat tyre. Prep was done 100% correctly, and yet we absolutely demolished the tyre, didn't we? It is beautiful up here. All the trips we've done over the years have been great, but this will be one that sticks in our mind for a long time. And then the 52 k's into this campground is wow. I mean, like, amazing. And you say to yourself, oh, this can't be topped, and then you're at the next location and it's just magnificent again. Four-wheel drive heaven, absolute bliss. Every turn was just a picture postcard. Then we've got the moon up in the sky, we've got the sun setting behind us. This is the stuff that imprints in your brain forever. It is just awesome. This is the Kimberleys at its intense best. Our first entry this week is this very tidy Prado. This photo was taken south of Perth, near Pemberton. Next is this Ford Ranger, shown here on its first off-road trip to Fitzroy Falls. This Hilux is slowly getting a few upgrades, and in the meantime spends plenty of time in the Wombat State Forest. Now this spot sure looks familiar. The 200 series is shown here on the way to Mitchell Falls Campground. And this week's last entry is this well set up Froopy, out having some fun at Southwest Rocks. If you've just seen a photo of your rig and you're the first person to email danny at your4x4.com.au, you've won yourself a Light Force stubby holder and tack torch, as well as a Brown Davis tub seal kit. All photos go into the running for a DP chip plug and go pedal chip, a HEMA HN7 GPS navigator, a Piranha DBE140 dual battery controller and a Piranha digital dual battery monitor. And don't forget, for your chance to win $1,800 worth of 4x4 rubber, check the Your 4x4 website for details.